Nintendo Switch. Customer reports an error code of 21010001. Let's put it to the test and see what happens. We're looking at PSU channel 1. We'll get to our PSU. And we are stuck at 0 0.10. Interesting. Oh, here we go. Power. And... There we go. There's our error code. It is 21010001. Let me see if I can find a meter so we can test. Apologies, I do not currently have a meter that can hook up to my system. It's on my list of things to get. But we're only pulling 5 volts, so that tells me we're not communicating with the M92T36. Having an OEM charger to test with is critical in troubleshooting these. So right now we can narrow it down either the M92T36 itself or something in between the port and the fuse. So let's get it apart and see what we see. We have it apart to do some initial testing. The side of the board that becomes exposed when you take the back plate off is side B. These are the common fault testing zones for side B. We're gonna go ahead and test those. We've unplugged our battery. We're gonna find a ground, which will be our port. The port shield is ground. Now we're gonna test these capacitors surrounding the chip. And the lines we're concerned about are the lines going to the chip. We'll start over here. Okay, this capacitor right here, this line going to the cap, should not be shorter to ground. It is. Continue our testing. This capacitor here has two lines going to the chip. In that case, only one side should be ground. It is. Okay, we appear to have exactly one shorted capacitor. Let's continue our testing. Let's move up the board to our MOSFET area. Everything looks okay there. Let's check our little filter. Let's check our invincible fuse. It's still being invincible. Because in the Nintendo Switch, the M92T36 is the fuse. Well, let's check our test pads. These test pads can reveal faults when anything else does not. But they all seem to be okay. Let's continue our testing over here by the BQ24193. Let's test this coil. It should not be shorted to ground, but there should be continuity going through it. And same rules apply on the BQ24183 as the M92T36, except that it has multiple caps with multiple lines going to the chip. I just generally know which side to test. And everything is checking out except that one capacitor right here on M92236. We need to continue our disassembly all the way down to the board level and we for sure will have to deal with that one problem and then we'll test on the other side of the board and see if we have any additional problems. Go from there.
we have the board out of the housing. Let's do some testing on side A. I just want to test this quietly USB and make sure it's okay. With one of our leads on the port. Let's test this big capacitor right here. Again, we're worried about the line going to the capacitor. And it seems to be fine. Now we want to check all of our filters. First thing I want to check is make sure none of them are shorter to ground. None of them should be. And now we want to check the continuity through them. But we do not want them to have continuity side to side. And everything looks okay. Looks like our only problem is that one capacitor around M92T36. For your orientation purposes, we will be working right here in that targeted area on side A. We're set up to remove our chip. In order to remove our chip, I need to set up my equipment. And while I set up my equipment, let me throw up my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the associate links in the description. If you go to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. And I greatly appreciate you. It won't cost you an extra dime. We're ready to remove our chip. Add some flux. Switch to our thermal glove. The most comfortable way for me to desolder something is the exact direction where it burns my hand off. I'm going to remove the chip and then we'll test. Make sure our short has been relieved. Just want to be real patient here. What we're looking for is all the pins surrounding the chip to wet. Go to a liquid state. When every pin is wet, the chip is ready to remove. Do not attempt to remove the chip before then. This board is going to suck up the heat, so be patient. There you go. Don't want it to cool down too much. Convenient ground pad. And we have cleared our short. Turn our heat back on. Grab our new chip in the proper orientation. Rewet our solder. We're looking for that center pad to wet before we attempt to place it. We need that solder to grab the chip. Okay, wetted. Drop it down. Remove the heat momentarily. Let it tack down. Put a little downward pressure, not much. Reflow. Smash it to the board, align if you need to, and hopefully done. We'll of course take a look. I'll do some rapid cooling real quick, and then we'll come back for inspection. The side looks reasonably aligned. It is not perfect. Side there looks to be okay. I may give this another reflow. I just don't like the alignment on those two sides those two sides seem to be okay. We put a little flux on there this time. If we can't get things to align just a tad better. That flux around there. Might just pull into place, we'll see. If not, we'll do a nudge. Same deal, we're not touching it until every pin wets. And it might just go kind of in place for us. It's not really nudging at the moment. There we go. I think it just snapped right into place. Wrap it cool again, and we'll come back and inspect again. That looks so much better. Still good there. Good there. And good there. Excellent. Give it a quick clean. Let's perform our power test. We will be using the modified iPhone Power Squid as we have put Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch Lite battery connectors on. In order to activate the Squid, I am going to use our OEM charger and we're just going to quickly plug it in and take it out. What we want to see here is just a steady climb in amperage with no hanging. And everything looked good on that. We're going to reset it, do it again, so we can test our docking with our OEM dock and extension. 
I now use this extension over the dongle as I ran into a couple problems on the dongle where things would dock on the dongle but would not do it on the OEMs. Don't ask me why, I still haven't figured that one out. Let's reboot. that in see if we get dock we're not getting dock in that direction as always these can be a little bit fiddly sorry these dock extension things can be a little bit fiddly let's try again reset boot up plug in our dock let it boot okay Plug in our dock. And we are docking. Excellent. That is good news. Now we'll see if we're drawing 15 volts. We should be. Just to make sure. And we are. Now, will it charge correctly? Give us the correct charging voltage and current will it fast charge and all that we really won't know that until we get it back in the housing enough to let it charge for a while and see what's going on that part will take time so i'll do most of that off camera and come back with the results at this moment we are fast charging 0.88 15 volts we'll see if it continues to behave correctly go from there everything seems to be charging normally and docking normally and seems to be good to go if you got value out of this video, I think you'll get value out of this one, and I'll see you there.